Ladies and gentlemen, the very funny Mr. Woody Allen. Thank you. Here's what I want to do in my time here. I want to review some of the salient features of my private life over the last year and put them in perspective for you. And then we'll have a brief question and answer period and evaluate them together. Now, I did a vodka ad. Let me start at the very beginning. A big vodka company wanted to do a prestige ad. And they wanted to get Noel Coward for it originally, but he was not available. He had acquired the rights to My Fair Lady, and he was removing the music and lyrics and making it back into Pygmalion. <laughs> And they tried to get Laurence Olivier and Hallie Loki, you know. And they finally got me to do it. I'll tell you, they got my name. It was on a list in Eichmann's pocket when they picked him up. <laughs> and I'm sitting home one night. I'm watching television. I'm watching a show called Surprise Divorce, you know. They take a happily married couple out of the audience and divorce them on television. <laughs> and the phone rings, and I answer it. And a voice on the other end says, how would you like to be this year's vodka man? And I said, no, I'm an artist. I do not do commercials. I will not pander. I don't drink vodka. And if I did, I wouldn't drink your product. And he said, too bad. It pays $50,000. And I said, hold on. I'll put Mr. Allen on the phone. And I was caught here in an ethical crisis. And, you know, should I advertise a product that I don't actually use as a problem? Because I am not a drinker. My body will not tolerate um, <laughs> spirits of any sort. I, I had two martinis New Year's Eve, and I tried to hijack an elevator and fly it to Cuba. <laughs> and in the past, whenever I had any sort of crisis at all, I used to consult with my analyst. This is public knowledge. I was in analysis for years because I've uh, emotional problems that I had. I suffered from the delusion that I was short and thin. <laughs> and I was in a strict Freudian analysis for a long time. And my analyst died two years ago, and I never realized it, you know? And now, whenever I have any sort of upset, I always consult with my spiritual counselor, who in my case is my rabbi. And I called him up on the phone, and I laid the proposition on him. And he said, don't do it, because it's illegal and immoral and unethical to advertise a product you don't actually use for the money. And I said, OK. And I passed up the ad. And I must say, it took great courage, because I needed the money. I was writing at that time. I needed to be freed creatively. I was working on a nonfiction version of the Warren Report. <laughs> I just passed the ad up. I was really cavalier. And a month later, I'm leafing through Life magazine. I see a photograph of Monique Van Voren in a slim bikini bathing suit. And she's on the beach in Jamaica. And there, next to her, with a cool vodka in his hand, is my rabbi. <laughs> so I call him up on the phone, you know, and he puts me on hold. <laughs> and what happened was he wanted to go into show business. He had done a late night prayer on television. And... <laughs> He was in the middle of the 23rd Psalm, and he tried to ad-lib, you know. He tried to name the Ten Commandments. And couldn't think of them, you know. Instead, he named the Seven Dwarfs. Now, in addition to my vodka ad, I also played Las Vegas for the first time this year. I'm not a gambler. You should know that about me. I went to the racetrack once in my life, and I bet on a horse called Battle Gun. And all the horses come out. Mine is the only horse in the race with training wheels. And you must take my word for this. There is something seductive about me when I shoot crap. <laughs> I'm at the gaming table, and I'm dicing. And a very provocative woman comes up to me. She begins to size me up. And I take her up to my room for a drink. And I shut the door. And I remove my glasses. Show her no mercy. <laughs> I unbutton my shirt, and she unbuttons her shirt. <laughs> and I smile, and she smiles. And I remove my jacket, and she removes her jacket. And I wink, and she winks. And I roll up my sleeves. 
And she rolls up her sleeves. And I realize I'm looking into a mirror. I don't want to go into details, but I was pulling glass out of my legs for two weeks. 